Tito, then Jawaharlal Nehru, then, you know, uh, Abdel Nasser, then Sukarno, then the uh, person uh, Kwame Nkrumah. So, and these were the five people. And today I will put an end of this chapter and tomorrow I will start the bipolarity system. Because I have already started that one and I will give you introduction and then I will, I will start that one. So come, come to the topic, India and the Cold War. As a leader of NAM, India, as a leader of NAM, right? India's response to the ongoing Cold War was twofold. At one level, it took particular care in staying away from the two alliances. Subse pehle in Nam ne do hissong ko India, India basically India and Nam both of it, because India is a leader, so that's what I'm saying about Nam. So India basically their work was twofold. Do hissong mein bata hua tha. Pehla hissa kya tha? At one level, it took particular care in staying away from the two alliances. Ki kisi bhi halat mein. No, they have to be, they have to be not to be aligned with. They don't have to be aligned with any any particular group. Uh, nor it's a um, USA group, nor it's a USSR group. And second word was it raised its voice against the newly decolonized countries becoming part of its alliances. So it raised its voice. He, what they raised its voice against? not against, it raised his voice in, in favor, in pro of those decolonized countries what do you mean by decolonized? Earlier, it was, uh, it was they, uh, they were under the colony. Now, it is, they were un, not with the colony because they were independent nations, fully independent nations. But even if they are independent nation, even they are with the independent, they were independent nation, they have to be allied they used to be alive with one group or another group. So uh, Nam says that if we if uh, we have to be um, if we are alive with any group, a big group, then you cannot be. We cannot be as a Nam non-aligned movement. We have to be have our own group. So the newly decolonized countries becoming part of these alliances. Second, India's policy was neither negative nor passive, which I told you earlier also. As Nehru reminded the word, non-alignment was not a policy of fleeing away. As day before yesterday, I told you, on the contrary, India was in the favor actively intervening the world of the soft soften the Cold War. India was actively part actively participated in softening the Cold War. And India tried to reduce the differences between the alliances and thereby prevent differences from escalating into a full-scale war. India all, never warned that there should be a full-scale war. Never warned that there should be a full-scale war. So India warned that there should be no scale, uh, full-scale war and full-scale of war, and they want to be, uh, they want to be, you know, aloof from any type of war. Indian diplomats and leaders were often used to communicate and meditate, uh, meditate between the Cold War and rivals, such as the Korean War in 1950. Here I was, came to an end, day before yesterday, here I have left you. Right? So I have told you a little bit um, past what I have done with you. So this is the chapter, whatever I have done, and India stands in the, in the position of Cold War. India do not want to be uh, ruled in, by the Cold War, India don't want to be allies with any big countries. India started its own movement, movement now non-aligned movement, and India supported the newly decolonized country. And I gave you the homework that you should write down all the uh, members uh, and their bio sketch, what who who were they, and which big country they belong to, which type of work they supported for the NAM and all. This part is NAM is very, very important chapter. You should go thoroughly in the chapter. Right. Now, it is important to remember that India chose to involve other members of the non-aligned group into this mission. Other members of non-aligned group into this mission. That other members who are not the member of the group, but they can be, they can be also actively support us, non-aligned group, so that the that the group should be powerful. 
During the Cold War, India repeatedly tried to activate those regional and international organizations which were not a part of the alliance, led by US and USSR. Nehru reposed great faith in the genuine commonwealth of free and cooperating nations and would play a positive role in softening it, not ending the Cold War. You know, we have got the commonwealth. What do you mean by commonwealth countries? Can you just think about that? What do you mean by commonwealth countries? One is independent countries and one is African countries, one is uh, American, uh, um, America as a country. What is what do you mean by commonwealth countries? Okay, I give you the answer. Commonwealth countries mean the country which were ruled by the British as a colony. Britishers ruled those countries under which Commonwealth countries were used to be there. So India was a Commonwealth country, Commonwealth, and uh, other African countries, other Asian countries were also in Commonwealth countries. You know, Nehru tried to activate, regenerate those Commonwealth countries to group themselves, and they should join, and they should join our group that is non-aligned movement. Right, so if they join non-aligned movement as a Commonwealth countries also, that Basically, you know, uh, Britishers were a colonial, colonial country. They, they from it is said that uh, Britain ka suraj kabi dubta nahi hai. It's an idiom in Hindi that Britain ka British ka suraj kabi dubta nahi hai. What do you mean by this? That some or somehow somewhere in the world there is a British colony. Somewhere it's a day, somewhere it's a night, but British colony is there. So it's ka suraj kabi dubta nahi. Always on the top. So when the Britishers, you know, decolonized those countries, we started, we said that these are the Commonwealth countries ruled by the Britishers only. Okay, now if somebody asks, what do you mean a Commonwealth country? Now you can give the answer. Right, so non-aligned movement was not, as some suggest, a noble international cause, which had a little to do with India's real interest. A non-alignment posture also served India's interests very directly in at least two ways. First, non-alignment allowed India to take international decisions and stances that served in interests rather than the interests of the superior powers and their allies. Right. So India came up as a powerful country. Now I'm defining what you mean by this. In particular point number one, what served India non-alignment, how non-alignment served Indian nation? India as, as a nation, as a powerful country. First of all, now India is a, is a powerful country you know, in the NAM group. Many other countries, they were small, but India is as a big country, as a, as a, you know, as a powerful country, they came up as a leader. India came up as a leader. And it served India, India India's interest. India's uh, NAM is serving India's interest as as it's serving the other non-alignment non-aligned country, which are not as a part of the any other allies. Allies means two allies were there, uh, Americans were there, and uh, you know uh, USSR Soviet Sangh was there. We were not with support of uh, Americans. We were not at the support of USSR Soviet Sangh. We, we want that. Any country should support, want to support us, want to help us, we, they are much, much more, uh, very much welcome to here. Now, second part. So, in it, NAM served India as a nation. NAM served India's interest. Right. Second part. India was often able to balance one superpower against the other. It, it was balancing the power. It is, a, a, India would behave like a scale. India behaved like a scale, right? It it was it was um, it was balanced. It was balanced. Can you give me just one one minute time? Just one second time. Yeah. So India was behaving like a balance of power. Balance of power. So second, India was able to balance one superpower against the other. Balance of power means one, in one uh, part it was America, another part it was a uh, Soviet Sun. 
so it it behaved like a balanced if america wants to help the, the nam people nam country they are most welcome if ussr wants to help nam country they are most welcome All right so india's policy of non alignment was like this if india favor uh, in if india feel ignored or unduly pressurized by one superpower it could to feel to go to the towards the another one so india was behaving a very you know shrewd politi politician india was behaving a very shrewd politician suppose somebody was pressure some one some group wants to pressurize uh, india so it, it's open to the another part suppose americans are pressurized to that they should go to um, um, american one you western country so the another part is uh, open for the uh, soviet sun so that's why you know 1971 we had a pact with the soviet sun when american refused us that we will not having a good friendship relation friendly relation with us uh, india then india indian prime minister mr indira gandhi shifted towards the nation of uh, united uh, ussr soviet sun ki taraf jhuk gaye the hum because that the soviet sun helped us okay so neither alliance system could take india for granted so neither alliance system alliance nor ussr nor usa they cannot take us granted right next india's policy of non alignment were criticized on a number of counts here we may refer to to, to, to criticism first india non alignment was said to be unprincipled in the name of pursuing regional interests it was said often refused to take firm stand on the critical international issues you know india was always behaving a soft target it is also a soft target it don't want to criticize any country sometime when it is say that it's a personal relations are could be jeopardized with any superpower if sometime india keeps mum it don't want to criticize when lots of people you know a lot of countries they want they want that india should criticize uh, the suez suez canal uh, policy suez canal policy but india be, be, became mum it didn't criticize because uh, uh, it it is said that um, dignities of indian origin they said that it can harm india's interests so it was mum chup mein hi bhalai hai sometime it is in hindi we call it chup chuppi mein bhalai hai so india sometime uh, uh, accepted this policy ki chuppi mein bhalai hai but lot of people lot of people here means nations lot of other nation want that india should speak up right but in india didn't number first on many international issues second it is suggested that india was inconsistent and took contradictory uh, posture having criticized other joining alliance india signed the treaty of friendship ussr i told you earlier also um, the day before yesterday uh, that uh, india signed a treaty with ussr and sometimes we say that uh, you know we should not be allies with any other country but basically when uh, america refused that india it, it will not help india in the war of uh, 1971 bangladesh war bangladesh liberal war liberation war it, it will not support uh, india it will support pakistan then they, india has no other option i told you it's a, if we go to if we go to um, second part india second point earlier which i told you it, it the uh, one option is always open for india that is the reason during the 1971 war india shifted towards uh, um, ussr because ussr helped india and to um, uh, to get the independence of bangladesh All right it is suggested that india was inconsistent and took contradictory posture having criticized other joining alliance india signed the treaty of friendship with ussr which i told you just now india needed diplomatic and possibility military support during the bangladesh crisis which i told you that america didn't uh, reply positively so india automatically shifted towards ussr and ussr when we had a contra, we had a, a signed treaty with 20 years friendship treaty friendship treaty with ussr then really ussr helped us a lot during 1971 war also and in in many from 71 to onwards till now and now if now we say russia is there because after disintegration of ussr russia became the country and um yes russia is vladimir putin the president of russia vladimir putin it helped india a lot 
so non alignment was a strategy evolved in the cold war context as we see that in chapter 2 in chapter 2 we will uh, study much more with the disintegration of uh, now i'm giving you the what we will study in 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 second chapter this disintegration of ussr of the ussr and the end of cold war the moment 1940 look now, now uh, it's very clear when 1945 second world war uh, 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 second world war ended the cold war started 1991 when ussr was disintegrated jab ussr ke tukde hue the you disintegrated and 15 new republics were born from ussr can you imagine 15 new nations were born from ussr only one nation was there in as pakistan and it's, it's still troubling us still pakistan to giving a lot of trouble to india that uh, now in from ussr 15 new countries were born republics what do you mean by republics the head of the state is also being elected that is called republic right so both as an international movement and as a core of india's foreign policy lost some of its earlier relevance and effectiveness so the power of ussr has been decreased now only one unipolar earlier we were bipolar system end of uh, and another chapter is end of bipolarity end of bipolarity and it means the unipolar system you know for example only one country as a superpower earlier there was a balance of power between ussr and usa right now it's a not balance of power it's only one unipolar only that is america americans or usa is the only superpower both as an international movement and in the core of india's foreign policy lost some of its early relevance and effectiveness our non alignment contains some core values and enduring ideals number 1 it was based on recognition that the colonized states share a historical affiliation and can become a powerful all decolonized countries if they unite together as a force they can be a very powerful force for example you know the military alliances nato is there america cto is there americans cento is there americans one is only us USSR, USSR having a Warsaw Pact, but now uh, we have got the NAM, Non-Aligned Movement, that is also being a force power, force a very forceful power, very powerful power, right? So if they come together, it means that the poor and often very small countries of the world need not become followers. Of, I'm sorry, <coughs> if they become a powerful country if the nam become a powerful and nam is a powerful country i'm not saying nam is a not a powerful country nam is a powerful alliance powerful group and if we, it it support the uh, poor country a wanted country needy country then other um, let me tell you one thing more than 100 150 groups are there uh, countries are there in nam if they if they chose uh, two or three countries to support them they can do it many rich countries are there in in nam group so very small countries of the world need not become and they need not become to follow the policy of uh, ussr uh, russia or the follow the policy of uh, usa capitalism or communism they can they have their own ism they can have their own ism that is that is our uh, you, you know third world countries that uh, nam group namism right so it was also based on the re resolve to de democratize the, the international system by thinking about an alternative world order to reduce existing inequality so what we do in nam we always you know uh, say that what type of inequalities project the inequalities which are done by the by the by the superpower right americans earlier it was russia also or ussr also hum usko highlight karte the nam always highlighted the inequalities of done by the superpower so here we came to an end the cold war era because after um, disintegration of uh, ussr the cold war 1991 cold war was ended and another on a unipolar system started bipolarity has been end so this was the part Uh, now page number 14 i'm giving you page number 14 just wait for few seconds yeah 
it on page number 14 arms control treaties limited test ban treaty lbt ltbt limited test ban treaty that is banned nuclear weapon tests in the atmosphere in outer space and underwater signed by the us uk ussr in moscow on august 5th 1963 it is all these page number 14 these all are the burning questions still it is relevant it's all questions it can it, have, it can have two marks question what do you mean by ltbt limited test ban treaty and it was signed in 5th of august 1963 what is there banned uh, banned nuclear weapon test in atmosphere and it was signed by usa uk ussr where it was signed it is signed at moscow next is nuclear non-proliferation tt ntpt npt nuclear non-proliferation tt allows only the nuclear weapon states to have nuclear weapons and stops other from acquiring them look it's a dis discrimination treaty they forced india also to sign the treaty but india didn't sign it it is said that it's a it's it's, it's a bias decision and it's a, it's a discrimination against those countries who don't have the nuclear weapons so always only the nuclear weapon state to have nuclear weapons and stop other from acquiring them for the purpose of npt a nuclear weapon state is one which has manufactured and exploded a nuclear weapon or weapons or other ex explosive nuclear explosive de device prior to january 1967 so there are five nuclear weapon states us ussr later russia britain france and china so it is signed in washington london and uh, and moscow on july 1st 1995 it's a discriminated policy where it stopped other other countries not to go for the nuclear weapons they say that five nations say that they will provide nuclear umbrella to those countries which don't have nuclear weapons they don't have to go for the nuclear arms right so it, india didn't sign it next is strategic arms limitation talk that is salt salt one Salt was a movie also. If you want to know, Salt it was a beautiful movie. If you can watch this movie into a video or a mobile, you, can, you should watch it. So again, it uh, was uh, from USA and USSR. Uh, US and, USA and USSR between two nations that are how the Cold War was, was going on. Salt is a beautiful movie. Right, go on. If you can watch, you can, you can do it. The first round of the strategic arms limitation talks between November 1969, the Soviet leader Leonard Brezhnev and the US President Richard Nixon signed the following treaty in, on, in Moscow. The date was 26th May 1972. Treaty was limited anti-blastic anti missile system, ABMs, anti-blastic missile system, so that nuclear power should be limited. To some people, some people here means nations, right? Anti uh, anti plastic missiles. This was a nuclear weapon, nuclear weapon. So they said that we they will not go further to blast the nuclear missiles uh, policies and all nuclear weapons and all. So they had a treaty between both of them. It's a salt one. Then salt two, then salt three, right? Salt two was there. Then it, the second round conference was a uh, second uh, round was in number 72 president jimmy carter and soviet leader leonard Brezhnev signed this treaty to control the strategic offensive arms in vienna it was signed in 18th june 1979 right another salt uh, this was salt two and then is strategic arms reduction treaty uh, to reduce the arms and ammunition strategic arms reduction treaty now mind it my friends you have to write down all these ltbt in your copy npt salt one salt two now my part is my next part is start one uh, start one strategic arms reduction treaty to reduce the arms and ammunition right treaty signed by the ussr president mikhail gorbachev 
and US President George Bush on the reduction and limitation of strategic offensive arms in Moscow, 31st of July, 1991. But it didn't help them. They are still going on nuclear missiles and all. It's only treaty in the uh, ban treaty on in, on the paper. On the paper, it's a not reality. Reality meaning in a kabi bi ban ni hone diya. Right. Sec and last one is start uh, start two treaty signed by Rus Russian President Boris Yeltsin and the U.S. President George Bush. Here it is. I enlarged the screen. Right. Treaty signed by the Russian president, Boris Yeltsin, president of Boris, Russian president, and US President George Bush on the second, on the reduction and limitation of strategic offensive arms in Moscow, 3rd of January, 1993. It is again renewed. They were renewing the uh, arms treaty. So whatever I have done, this is up end of the chapter. End of the chapter. Next will be your, the end of the bipolarity system, same, same book. Second chapter, two two chapter we will do it in every part. Then two chapter from the other book. Okay. Now take care. All these are the these were the arms control treaties. You have to write down in your homework and all the other text textual questions. Then non textual question I will give you later on. Take care. Till then, goodbye. See you in the next video. Thank you.